Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Today I wanted to talk about rackets for beginners or lower level intermediate players. I don't think I've covered this in a video. I've talked about it plenty on the website. Articles there you can find. But I wanted to talk about what kind of racket you should look for if you're new to tennis or you're playing kind of lower level tennis. Tennis is such a difficult sport. It takes time to learn the technique, the footwork, ball anticipation required to actually really enjoy tennis. Tennis gets better as we improve. I've really noticed that over the last two years when I've gone from playing twice a week to playing five times a week and, and seeing the improvement and also really uh, enjoyed the process of improving, working on my footwork and my fitness and, and so on. But if you're quite new to the game or you're, you're just uh, for some reason playing at a lower level and nothing wrong with that, but you might get a racket that helps you and doesn't work against you. That's uh, my recommendation is to find the equipment that can help you play a bit better and not be counterproductive into your tennis improvement. What is kind of typical for a beginner lower level intermediate rackets is that they need to be pretty light so they're easy to swing, easy to get into place while you're learning uh, the take back and the ball anticipation and that stuff. You need to have a racket that's pretty light. It helps that you get some free power so it's a little bit of a thicker beam. The beam with is a bit thicker than most kind of player frames for advanced players and you have a pretty open string pattern so you get a bit of help to get it over the net. So that extra launch of the ball is gonna help you not hit the net so much. And the bigger head size will also help you have fewer miss hits, get a bit of a cleaner ball strike, and you're gonna have extra depth thanks to the generous power of this frame. And, and things to look for in a beginner's frame, there are no really clear rules beyond going a bit bigger in head size, at least 100 square inches, a bit thicker in beam, at least 24 millimeters. I don't think there are many rules that tell you that you have to play with a 260 gram racket, which is pretty light. The issue with playing, with buying a racket that's made for beginners is that the racket might limit you later on. So you might want to look at, and that's my recommendation, a racket that's, that's pretty easy to use, but it's not, you're not going to outgrow it as you improve. You're going to be able to keep playing with this racket. Uh, you might just need to change the string setup a little bit and maybe you want to add a little bit of weight, but you can still play with this racket. It's good enough to last you into intermediate and even intermediate to advanced levels of play. That's my recommendation. There are many, many rackets out there that kind of can go in between this, these areas now. More and more players are moving over to more powerful rackets, more spin friendly rackets to get a little bit of help as tennis is getting faster. It's a faster game now. It's more spin focused thanks to the polyester strings. You can keep the ball in play with some pretty uh, spin oriented swings. So tennis has changed and the equipment has changed, albeit pretty slightly with the sport. And uh, that's uh, so my recommendation is to look for something that can you can stay with for uh, while you progress into the sport. Some players will say, hey, buy a cheap aluminium racket if you're a beginner, just play with that. That's not my recommendation. Actually get a good racket that you can stay with, that you can feel comfortable with, then you can upgrade strings, whatnot, but don't start uh, with something that's cheap, uh, that has weak materials, maybe too stiff, you might end up with arm issues. Go for a quality racket. That's my main recommendation if you're a beginner to lower level intermediate, make sure you go for a quality but easy to use racket that can help you transition and become a better tennis player. And then it's easier for you then to make strides into your game with the right equipment. Avoid very, very stiff rackets. If you have any concerns about arm issues, the, mo the technique of, uh, of beginners to lower level intermediate players is usually that they hit the ball a bit late, off balance, uh, we all do that from time to time, but the, the frequency is higher uh, when you're new to tennis. So you're gonna hit the ball late, you're gonna hit the ball off center, you're gonna get a lot of vibrations sent to your arm if you play with a very stiff racket. So generally I would avoid it unless you're adding a multi-filament string or a synthetic gut string that's gonna help you get a little bit more power but also more comfort. So. Uh, try to avoid super stiff rackets unless you really like it. There is a benefit to stiff rackets and that's that they 
they do offer a bit more depth for free but nowadays you can actually get pretty comfortable rackets that still give you good depth and you don't have to worry so much about potential tennis elbow popping up down the line and these days manufacturers usually have one kind of power or intermediate racket per line so if you find your favorite player or you just like a design of a racket they usually have a more beginner focused frame within that line you don't need to um, find a specific beginner line you can just go for a clash for example uh, if you don't like the regular clash it's a bit too heavy uh, although i would state that that's also a racket that could be fine for beginners there's the clash light so many frames have light versions uh, so, so called the team versions where they are a bit easier to swing uh, lower swing weight around 300 310 strong and which is where you want to be and um, if you're looking for a lower level intermediate beginner racket that's uh, that's the swing weight you should be at so i would at least recommend you to go like a hundred square inch racket i think that's that's the minimum you should be looking at don't go for a, a smaller head size than that don't go for a 95 98 or something Go for at least 100 you can go oversize which is anything above 100 102 104 i can recommend the head gravity s for example yonix v core or e zone they also have a light version of their rackets which is around 285 grams the v core 100 is playable as well it's not a very demanding racket can be used up to advanced level but also from a lower level beginner level but if you want a bit of an easier swinging experience i would go with the l version the, the lighter version but the same kind of frame so you don't need to go in my opinion for an oversized frame you can go for a 100 screen racket and enjoy that and grow with that it's still going to give you decent forgiveness and some power so the e zone or v core which is what i'm holding right now and uh, they are pretty solid beginner intermediate level rackets yonix also offer the astrel that's a beginner focused line worth checking out supposed to have a kind of resin in the graphite that is supposed to give it a more comfortable feel so worth checking that one out i haven't yet reviewed that or tried it the astrel line but it's definitely a more focused towards beginners and when i see the words comfort focused on comfort i really appreciate it if you're into technofiber frames there is the new one i'm talking about comfort um, the tfx1 series they actually have a lighter version of this or actually two the 285 gram is the one i i generally recommend you don't need to go all the way down to 275 i think sometimes that that weight is a bit too light and you don't get enough stability um, depending ob obviously of the balance of the racket generally i would say that the 280 gram is a kind of a perfect weight for a lower level or beginner players uh, i think that that is perfect this is the 300 gram but the the 280 looks the same the open string pattern quite thick beam but with a dampening technology in the handle so the vibrations are not that harsh uh, you're going to get some easy depth and spin with this frame um, another frame from the same company but um, their mother brand is lacoste this is the l20 very nice begin oriented frame if you really like brands and like a bit of a high-end brand i actually really enjoy this one and this one has the same technology in the handle as you might know lacoste owns technofiber but uh, this one is a little bit easier to use and a little bit less stiff than the tfx1 in my opinion so 280 grams there's also a lighter version of this bubble up they also have a bit of a stiffer frames but also nice for beginners this is an older bubble up pure drive racket that actually used to belong to julia gurges so this is a pro player frame this is not really what you should use but the pure drive overall as a line whether it you like a rafa or you want to go for the pure arrow but they have team versions and they have the 107 square inch oversized frames which is a bit more powerful but the pure drive or pure arrow team should be lighter versions that give you some power some depth i would just be a bit careful with stiffness because there's no real dampening technology in these frames but if you have no issues with stiffness or you use a very soft nice string and uh, then you can play with those frames and they're quite uh, beginner friendly or lower level intermediate friendly i would also advise you although i don't have it here uh, to check out the clash line very comfortable rackets lively and there's the clash s 100s which is very spin friendly 
it's going to give you a lot of lift on the ball and you you're not going to suffer from from tennis elbow with these frames i think because they're very very soft on the arm so there's the clash 108 uh, if you like a bigger head size or the clash 100 l which is lighter and spin friendly and powerful but not as stiff as for example the pure drives pure arrows uh, so that's also an interesting line uh, perfect for beginner lower level intermediate just check that out i uh, really like it prints also uh, offer great rackets they, their lines can be a bit confusing as a beginner i would check out the prince legacy line very interesting line of rackets uh, offer easy power easy spin nice comfortable feel so prince legacy frames excellent for beginners when it comes to head rackets they do have a head power head pwr for each line that they offer so whether you like an orange radical or a more yellow extreme or the speed they do offer a bunch of different models for each line uh, so with head you can go for either, either the s rackets they're very forgiving generally either, usually oversized a little bit thicker beam easier to swing i generally recommend the gravity s i find that that's a perfect racket for lower level to intermediate players i have friends that use it that really like the gravity s has a, a nice string pattern for spin but with some control not a, a very stiff frame it's quite user friendly but you can also go if you want more power for the pwr that's the the powerful oversized head frames the pwr but otherwise if you don't want to go all in there you want a racket to grow with uh, which is generally what i recommend the head s lines is where you should look at because those are all easy to use all give you extra power and spin and uh, quite a forgiving head size if you're into dunlop frames check out the fx line maybe fx 700 that's probably the easiest racket they have or the FX500 if you're open to a bit more of a challenge. But these frames are a bit stiff, so be careful. And you need to obviously get a string that's working well with the racket. And for you, uh, beginners, lower level, intermediate players, avoid polyester strings. In general, I would that would be my recommendation. Go for a multi-filament. They're durable, control-oriented multi-filaments if you feel like you get too much power and not enough control. But don't go for a polyester string. I don't think there's any need for you to look at polyesters uh, yet in the game. I know plenty of advanced players, intermediate to advanced, that play with uh, multi-filament strings that are softer for your arm, going to give you more power. Uh, so avoid recommendations or talks about polyester strings, which is what the pros use. Uh, because that's if you hit the ball in the middle of the string bed. If you have no arm issues, if you're, you're physically 100% fit. And the way you can tell usually is that these lively colors, uh, like the yellow one here, it's a Toraline string. These strings are stiffer, will give you more spin and control, but not really needed for uh, anyone uh, below the intermediate level, really. I mean, there, there are plenty of multi-filaments that are, that are excellent strings. Uh, for example, this Lacoste uh, racket has a string that's called TGV, TGV from Technofiber. Very nice multi-filament string. Uh, been in the racket for a while, still holds up. So if you see this more natural uh, style, color way of the string bed, that means it's a softer string. You still might want to restring from the one you get from the factory. So let's say you buy a racket, you get the factory string. That might be gone or not a very quality string, I really recommend you to restring it and get a, a quality multi-filament string like a head velocity, Technifiber X1 biface or Technifiber triax for more control. These strings are excellent multi-filaments. Wilson NXT also a good multi-filament. Uh, Bubblelot XL works well as well. So there are many many multi-filament strings of different price ranges that you can check out and i would really recommend you to go a full bed of that to get good control and still be able to get some power and not worry about arm comfort the head velocity mlt i think is the is the is for the price the best option for many many players because the price point is so good with that string and if you want more control you go for a thicker gauge that's going to last you longer so go 130 at least and if you want more power um, but a bit less durability you go for a thinner gauge down to 120 for the multi-filaments so those are my recommendations i hope they give you some idea of what to look for if you're uh, fitting this category if you're looking for a racket i would definitely advise you to 
do your research, uh, get a quality frame so you don't have to reconsider very soon. Make sure it's the right grip size, that it fits your hand and that it has a good strings because strings are important. Don't, uh, don't ignore the strings. They make a big difference to how the racket plays and uh, how it will perform over time. That's all for my video about beginner rackets. I hope you found it useful. If you want to support Tennis Nerd, check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash tennis nerd, where you get more content and you support Tennis Nerd. If you want to buy a racket or a string or anything else tennis related, please consider doing so through my affiliates, Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe, Tennis Only. Links in the description below. I get a small commission. If you do at no cost to you, big thanks. And uh, yeah, have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.